John 4, verse 23, beginning, Jesus said, The hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now you think about, as we sing from a heart that is so grateful, and we give sacrificially from a heart that is so cheerful, and when we, uh, when we listen to God's word from a heart that is honest and good, and when we partake of the Lord's Supper from a heart that is contemplative of the past and what's been done for us, and then when we pray and we, from an humble and contrite heart, pour out our soul to the Lord. Now, prayer is somewhat different than the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is to be done only on the first day of the week. Prayer is something that is to be done daily in our lives. And your theme this summer has been the power to be more. And tonight, the power to be more prayerful. When I think about power, I think about God, the omnipotent one, Revelation 19, verse 6. I think about the Bible, powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, Hebrews 4, and verse 12. I think about the power of unity. Solomon said that a three-fold cord is not easily broken. And my Lord in a prayer in John 17 said that the whole world can be influenced by being one. And I think about the power of Christians. My Lord said in John chapter 1 and verse 12, to those that came to him gave he power, that received him gave he power to become sons of God. Philippians 4 and verse 13 talks about doing all things through Christ who strengthens me. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, Paul said, God hath not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible talks about be strong in the Lord. In 1 John 2 verse 13 and 14, John talked about even some young men who were strong and the word of God abideth in them, and they had overcome the wicked one. If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, verse 31. And verse 39 talks about, verse 37 talks about being conquerors through him. So strong. You know, in Luke chapter 11, the Lord uh, had been with them, those disciples. And they had prayed, and they had a request. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of requests. Young people want to know, how do I know I'm in love? Or they want to know this. People want to know how to succeed and do this or that. But you remember what the disciples asked the Lord? Lord, teach us how to pray. And prayer. To be more prayerful. You may be completely satisfied with your prayer life. And I hope you are. But if you're not, I hope that you have a desire to be more pleasing to God in this area. And almost in any area where we want to change, there first has to be a dissatisfaction kind of with where we are. Paul would talk about that in Philippians 3 and verse 12 when he said, I count not myself to have apprehended. Not there yet. And probably most of us feel that way about prayer. But we must also believe in our ability to change. And God will help us change. And you know he will. And we must form a picture <clears throat> of what we want to be. Paul would say, uh, you know, I, I press toward a mark. And you remember the prodigal son, he, he formed this picture again uh, of what he wanted to be. And with a resolve to make that happen. And then there must be that focus. And Paul would talk about pressing toward that mark. So 
I hope tonight, that in these next few minutes, as we think about prayer, uh, and to realize that it's to be a part of our daily life. In Matthew 6, 11, Jesus talked about, give us this day our daily bread. There, there's a contentment there for one day at a time, which implies that prayer, like Daniel, in Daniel 6 and verse 10, uh, he opened his windows toward Jerusalem, prayed three times daily. The psalmist in Psalm 55, verse 17, he said, evening, uh, night, noon, uh, will I pray? Luke 18, verse 1, Jesus said that men ought always to pray. In Romans 12, 12, to continue instant in prayer. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, to pray without ceasing. If we were to define prayer, I love the Bible definition more than any. 1 Samuel 1, verse 15, Hannah poured out her soul to the Lord. Could there be a more beautiful definition of prayer? than pouring out the soul to the Lord. Romans 10, verse 1, Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God. And you remember in 1 Timothy 2, and verse 1, Paul said to Timothy, I would therefore that prayers and supplications and intercessions and giving of thanks. In Philippians 4, and verse 6, he talked about, Let your requests be made known unto God. And all this has to do with the definition of prayer. The communication of man with his creator. The hearts converse with God. The offering up of our desires to God for things that are agreeable to his will in the name of Jesus Christ. I really believe that in prayer we realize the greatness and the goodness of God. We look within with personal inventory to our own lives. We express gratitude. We show concern for others and come face to face with our own personal sins. And it is a peculiar benefit only to God's people in his family. A spiritual blessing that's found only in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 3. As we're born into that family where we can say, Our Father which art in heaven. Matthew 6 and verse number 9. And bow our knees unto the Father. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 14. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. 1 Peter 3 and verse number 12. And you know, neither man nor government nor Satan can lock prayer out of the life of a Christian. In Acts 4 and Acts 5, they had arrested Peter and John. They didn't keep them from praying. In Acts 16 and verse 25, they'd arrested Paul and Silas and had them in stocks and bonds. But still they prayed. Daniel being threatened with a lion's den, but still he prayed. Prayer. Let me ask you something. Do you rise in the morning and not ask God for strength for the day? Do you pillow your head at night without thanking him for the blessings of the day? Do you eat meal after meal without thanking him and being filled with gratitude for the very food that you eat that he supplies? Is there room in your schedule for prayer? Do you find it hard to make time for prayer? I want to notice with you seven things that I really believe the power to become more prayerful grows out of these basic fundamental things. Number one, a willingness to to obey God. Prayer, I know, is a privilege. But prayer is also a command. Not everyone that says to me, the Lord, Lord, shall enter heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 7, 21. Christ is the author of eternal salvation to those that obey him. Hebrews 5 and verse 9. Near the end of the Bible, blessed are they that keep his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. And enter in through the gates into the city. 
part of God's will for you and for me is to be people of prayer. Pray without ceasing. That's a command. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Men ought always to pray. Luke 18, verse 1. At the end, you remember of the Christian armor in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul said, praying always. But what a verse is found in 1 Samuel 12, verse 23, and a principle that no doubt is woven through the Bible. When Samuel said, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But could it be any plainer than James 5 and verse 16? Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. And I really believe that a willingness to obey God will motivate us to be more prayerful. Number two, the desire to be like Jesus. Don't you want to be more like the Lord? Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, but we are all with, uh, behold as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, a mirror, are changed into that same image from glory to glory. In Galatians 4 and verse 19, that Christ is to be formed in us. We're to walk as he walked, 1 John 2 and verse number 6, walk in his steps, 1 Peter 2, verse 21. Well, you follow the life of Jesus. And just think, if he needed to pray, how much I need to pray even more. At his baptism in Luke chapter 3 and verse 21, the Bible said he was praying, rising up a great while before day, before choosing the apostles in Luke 6 verse 12. Uh, there it says that he prayed all night. But in Mark 1 and verse 35, a part of his day, he rose up early to pray. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 18, we find him before asking the disciples, whom do men say that I the Son of Man am? And you remember that great uh, answer and further discourse between the Lord and the disciples that's given a little more detail in Matthew 16. But in Luke chapter 9 and verse 18, it says he was praying. Out into the, the mountain alone to pray in Matthew 14, verse 23. At the Mount of Transfiguration in Luke 9 and verse 29, he was praying. You remember in the upper room in Matthew 26 and verse 26, he gave thanks for the bread and for the fruit of the vine. And in John 11 and verse 41 at the tomb of Lazarus, Father, I thank thee. And you remember in the garden in Matthew 26, thy will be done and not mine. Three of seven statements from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You want to be like Jesus? It ought to motivate you to be more prayerful. Number three, a great sense of need. You know, one of the great desires of Satan is to get us to deny our dependence on God. He has a lot of desires. In fact, the Lord said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan had desired that he might have you. And there are so many desires that he has for you and me. But one is to get us to deny our dependence on God. How much we need him. How much we need his care and his provision. How much we need his counsel. And out of a deep sense of need. Acts 14 and verse 17. Paul said that God had not left himself without witness, but he's done good. He's given us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filled our hearts with food and gladness. In Acts 17 and verse 25, he giveth life and breath and all things. Now, if you don't think you're dependent on him, just stop breathing. And I promise you, in just a few minutes, there will be an emergency in your life. His reign, his son, Matthew 5, and verse 45. Without me, you can do nothing, Jesus said in John 15, 5. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, James 1 and verse 17. 
Oh, Lord, I know it's not within man that walketh to direct his own step. Jeremiah 10 and verse 23. And just think about those spiritual blessings that are in Christ. The riches of his grace. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10, you know, it's by the grace of God that I am what I am. Think about the sin problem, even for a Christian. What if, what if the Lord, I remember Franklin Count giving this illustration one time and it stood in my mind ever since. He said, what if the Lord told you, you know, in the watery grave, I'm going to immerse, when you're immersed, I'm going to remove every sin, your past and the blood of Jesus. And he does that and he's done that for us as Christians. But what if he said, I'm going to give you five years. I'm going to give you five years and then I'll I, I not be gracious to you anymore. You've got to make it on your own then. Levi mentioned a while ago that I was baptized in 1968. That's 51 years ago. What if he'd said 50 years? I'd be in a heap of trouble. My need of him. Also, number four. When there is within us a heart of gratitude, it will make us more prayerful. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15 says, Be ye thankful. Verse 17 says, Giving thanks. Philippians 4 and verse 6 says, With thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Giving thanks always for all things. Ephesians 5, verse 20. Paul said in Romans 7, verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Christ my Lord. In 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 57, Thanks be to God for the victory. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 15, Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift and a heart of gratitude surely empowers us to be more prayerful. But not only a willingness to obey the Lord, a desire to be like Jesus, a sense of the great need that we have of him, and the heart of gratitude, but surely a deep awe of God prompts us to be more prayerful. Part of prayer it's praising God. Unto him be glory. Ephesians 3 and verse 21. Isaiah 43 and verse 5. We've been created for God's glory. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. We're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Part of that's in prayer. You remember the model prayer, Matthew 6. The Lord taught his disciples hallowed be thy name. And part of prayer is the praise of the great God that we serve. Thou art worthy, O Lord, of glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, Revelation 4 and verse number 11. And surely a deep sense of awe that we have for God empowers us to be more prayerful. But then number six, with great concern and compassion for others. Doesn't that carry you to God's throne? I spent part of today today with a man. He had a brother to die night before last at Brookwood Hospital. We'll have his funeral Saturday. He's hurt. This man's 57 years old, died of a stroke. How many times have I prayed for Chuck already in the loss of his brother? Surely we care about other people and their hurts and the struggles that they have. In 1 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 5, Samuel talked about how he had, he had prayed for them. Pray one for another, James 5 and verse 16. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is 
that they might be saved. Romans 10, verse number 1. I just mentioned a while ago in Luke 22 where the Lord prayed for Peter. In John 17, he prayed for you that day, prayed for me, for all those who believe through the word. And out of a deep concern and compassion for others, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 and 2, prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for those that are in authority, that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life power to be more prayerful but then think about proper priorities surely bring about being more prayerful the old song that we sing sometimes ere you left your room this morning did you think to pray brother Clifford Smith some of you would remember that name I guess one of my favorite songs that I ever heard him lead was Pray All the Time. And you just think about priorities of loving God that calls for prayer. The priority of seeking first the kingdom, praying for the church, praying for leaders in the church and for preachers for young families, for the elderly. The priority of being obedient and faithful. The priority of the seriousness about sin. The priority of others first and ourselves last. Surely prompt all of us to be more prayerful. But I ask you, are you praying? Do you have a goal to be more prayerful? Is it your prayer, God, help me, give me power to be more prayerful? You know, there are times when God won't hear us. And the Bible talks about that often. I trace through the book of Jeremiah. And I wish I had time to read to you the different times when God said, you can pray, but I won't hear. Don't get like that. Don't get where God won't hear your prayers. But when we're careless about our prayer life, we can get into that very state in Job 21 and verse 15, Job talked about the wicked, and he said, they said, what profit is it that we pray? And you may have times because God said no or because God said wait a while or because God has given you something different than that which you thought you ought to have that you maybe too have said, what profit is there to prayer? And you may be in the state of James 4 and verse 2 where James said, you have not simply because you don't ask. In Matthew chapter 7, you remember when the Lord said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be open to you. But you remember the Lord goes on to talk about an earthly father and then compares our superiority of our great heavenly father and he says, good things to them that ask him. But have we become careless toward prayer? Is God waiting to hear from you? You know, when we fail to pray, it speaks volumes. I remember one time uh, many years ago, I received a call on Monday morning from over in Mississippi. And there was a mother on the line. She knew there was a Double Springs, Alabama, but she didn't know that she had to investigate to find out that there was church there. And she called the office. She introduced herself and asked me my name, and she asked me if I would to go to the local jail. Her son was in the local jail. And I'll never forget going up there that morning. I asked the sheriff if I could see him. He brought him out into the courtroom there and we sat and talked and he had been picked up for 
uh, failing to pay for some gas. He was out of money, and he just pulled up and got some gas and drove off, and they pulled him over when he got to Double Springs. And I'll never forget, in our conversation, he had attended one of our Christian colleges even, and he said, you know, I've quit praying. You know, when we fail to pray, that says it speaks volumes. It speaks volumes about our love for God, our concern for one another, our seriousness about sin. It, it speaks about our ingratitude when we are careless toward prayer. Do we just think, well, God knows and I shouldn't have to pray? But that's not the way it is. Matthew 6, the Lord said, and I know your needs, but I want you to pray. So let's be more prayerful. You know, God will not hear us when we won't hear him. God won't hear us when we live in willful and presumptuous sin. God won't hear us when we ask selfishly. God won't hear us when we pray insincerely. I spoke at the Wood Avenue Church in Florence a few weeks ago, and they assigned me the topic, The Sounding of Trumpets. I first thought, I know that's Matthew 6, but what in the world are they wanting? But oh, what a thought. When we have to sound a trumpet for the praise of men to give and stop traffic in the streets to be seen of men when we pray, to use long repetitions to make our prayers long that we might be praised and heard by men, to fast to be seen of men, Yes, we're blowing our trumpet. And the Lord said the only reward we're going to get is the praise that men give it to us. How sad to trade our soul for that. God won't hear us when we do not pray in faith. He won't hear us when we pray as a substitute for obedience. He won't hear us when we are unforgiving he won't hear us when we're living in disobedience. He won't hear us when we're impenitent. He won't hear us when we're self-righteous. He won't hear us when there are factions among us. He won't hear us when we do not abide in him. And he won't hear us on the day of judgment. When we cry out for the rocks to fall on us, It'll be too late. When the door is shut and we cry open to us, Matthew 25, verse 10, it'll be too late. Let's be praying people. Let's be on terms. God, let me encourage you. We only got a couple minutes, but let me encourage you to read a prayer by Hezekiah in 2 Kings 19. Or the prayer of Jabez. In 1 Chronicles 4, Nehemiah's prayer in Nehemiah 1, David's prayer in Psalm 51, the beautiful prayer of the early church in Acts chapter 4, or the Lord's prayer in John 17. And think about the model prayer of Matthew chapter 6, where the Lord talked about this prayer being a model, it could be a model in its scope, in its simplicity, in its brevity. It's a, it's a model in its direction. Our Father, don't pray to anybody else. It's a model in its reverence. Hallowed be thy name. A model in its emphasis. Thy kingdom come it's a model in its concern thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven a model in its restraint lead us not into temptation a model in its humility 
forgive us. A model in its restraint would be um, give us this day our daily bread, the contentment, and the insight into lead us not into temptation. And the praise, thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Alexander Campbell said one time, that time spent alone with the Father will help prepare one for every event in life. I think there's a lot of wisdom to that. We sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. As Christians, we are given the privilege of crying out, Abba, Father. And just think about this wonderful privilege that's also a responsibility. And those prayers that you pray go up as sweet incense. Revelation 5, verse 8, and chapter 8, verse 3, before God's very throne. And you know, your prayers can even shape the world. That's how powerful they are. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and verse 2. It's really at the handle of combating temptation. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And think about those that you've mentioned tonight, Sister Lewis, Young Jackson, those that are sick, James chapter 5, the privilege to pray and know that God will hear our prayers. Last night, some of us visited over at Hackleburg, Alabama, in their gospel meeting. And uh, in the announcements, they talked about prayer and how that prayers have been answered. And they were so, so very gracious. So let me encourage you to make time in your life. Make room in your schedule to be more prayerful. May God grant us the power to be more prayerful. Are you a Christian tonight? Do you have the privilege to call upon God as your father? Think about how many people would fall in the category of John eight forty four, where Jesus said, Ye are of your father, the devil. You're in his family. If you're in that family tonight, what a special privilege. You may be the very reason that God has withheld his son from coming today. Second Peter talks about, chapter 3, he talks about God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In verse 15, he says, an account of the long-suffering of the Lord is salvation. That's his purpose for the delay. Why not tonight obey the gospel? You've heard his word. Don't you believe it? Aren't you willing to turn from sin, confess that Jesus is God's son? To be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins if you're not his child. What a privilege. Look what you'd receive. Look what you'd become. With the privilege then to pray. To pray for forgiveness of sins in the future. To pray for all these things and areas that we've talked about tonight and so much more. If you have failed to pray and it has had a devastating effect in your life as it so often will. Why not come home tonight? Why not start all over and resolve? Yes, I'm going to be more prayerful. And it's going to affect every facet of my life, and my family, and my community, my workplace, my school, wherever it is. If you need to come tonight, it's prayer your wills. Together we stand and as we sing.